in part two, chapter 22 of Don Quixote, Don Quixote and Sancho Panza stay with the newlyweds for three days. Don Quixote is happy for the reunited lovers, and he tries to talk to Basilio and get him a more reputable or profitable line of work. Sancho Panza says his own wife isn't as good as he wants her to be, and she thinks the same of him. The Don wants to visit Montesino's cave to see firsthand whether it truly contained all the wondrous things everyone was always saying it did. So Basilio's cousin takes them to the cave. Sancho Panza and the cousin lower Don Quixote into the abyss with 600 feet of rope. When they pull it up later, the Don is sound asleep. They wake him up to hear what happened. In part two, chapter 23, it turns out Don Quixote never made it to the bottom of the cave. He stopped at a ledge 80 feet down and took a nap. When he woke, he was in a beautiful meadow. He soon met Montesinos himself, one of the famous 12 peers that Don Quixote so admires. Montesinos said that he, along with other knights and ladies, had been sentenced to eternal life in the cave by Merlin. Three days and nights passed while Montesinos and Don Quixote talked, and the lunatic knight even spotted the peasant girl whom Sancho Panza said was an enchanted Dulcinea del Toboso. Part two, chapter 24, begins with a note from the narrator who says the translator of Sidi Hamida Benegeli's manuscript noted in the margin how very unlikely Don Quixote's story about the cave was. Yet it must be believed because Don Quixote was the most truthful knight of his time, someone who would not tell a lie. Basilio's cousin invites them to stay at a nearby hermitage for the night, but Don Quixote wishes to sleep at the inn so he can speak to a man who passed them on the road. They also meet a young man intent on joining the army. Don Quixote speaks about the nobleness of the profession and invites the young man to dine with them. Don Quixote's dream about Montesinos brings up questions about the nature of truth. The events within the cave exceed all reasonable bounds, even for people who believe in fantastic stories of chivalry and romance. Does the fact that he believes he actually experienced it make it more true? Is truth the same thing as reality?